What will the new Avengers movie be? Let's find out. Have you been keeping up on Comic-Con? Yes. So you saw all the new Marvel announcements? Yes. I have uh, on Instagram, I follow Marvel, every single Avenger, except for Chris Evans, who's like, not on Instagram, uh, IGN, and um, like Disney Plus or something. Whatever. Well, then they what the hell am I doing? You yeah, should be hosting this show. I have all show. of that info, like just like scrolling through. <laughs> I had to do all this research, and you're just <laughs> like, this I was is, like, here's a bunch of pictures that this all is my say everyday all life. the things. Yeah. <laughs> I shot you like thumbnails of like all the new movies, and you're like, yeah, man, I'm on top of I this. I saw it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm already, this is old news for me. It's all good. Um, so, a quick recap uh, about the new movies and TV shows. A bunch of new movies, unexpected movies uh, coming out. Uh, including a new Black Widow movie. Yeah, I was surprised. And they said that one, the timeline of that one is in between Civil War and uh, the first Infinity War uh, okay. Avengers movie. So it kind of fits in between what she was doing um, before she went to go help Cap break out of prison. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, another movie, The Eternals. Yeah. Dang, which is and awesome. it's got a killer cast roster for that yeah. already, too. So. And that introduces like the whole cosmic universe uh, mm-hmm. to Marvel. Um, something that I'm not really familiar with much at all, uh, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Yeah, I, I wasn't familiar with that one either, but I'm excited. <laughs> Look at all these comics I have. Look at all these comics. There's more over along that wall. And uh, who the hell is Shang-Chi? Do you know? <laughs> no, I thought she was like with Iron Fist, right? Oh, yeah, I don't I don't know. I, uh, I don't know much. Sorry Fist, for either. my Marvel ignorance. Uh, Someone I do know, new Doctor Strange movie. Yeah, I'm pumped about that one. Uh, It's called The Multiverse of Madness. And I have a theory about this one. He's going to be paired along with uh, Scarlet Witch in this movie. Yeah, that's what I heard too. And knowing that Disney just purchased the Fox properties, my theory is that this is going to be the movie that introduces the X-Men and the Fantastic Four into the Marvel Universe. Uh, because they're going to be part of the multiverse. Hmm. We'll see. No idea. Uh, Another returning character, Thor. Love and Thunder. I'm so excited. Lady Thor. (laughs) And then rounding out the new movies, Blade. Blade. (laughs) Blade. From out of nowhere. All right. (laughs) Without Wesley Snipes. Did you like those movies? I only saw the first one. I didn't. I didn't really care. I I think I was too young to really care. It's like a vampire hunter slayer. Uh, whatever. We'll, I mean, we'll see. I'll watch it. I'll watch it. <laughs> um, something that I noticed about these new movies, though, is that it's mostly new people, new characters, new heroes. Uh, not a lot of returning heroes. Instead, they are relegating those to the new Disney streaming service. Um, and so some of those shows coming out, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yes, I'm excited about that one. I love... Um, all things Falcon, Winter Soldier. Their chemistry on screen was fantastic. WandaVision. Not super excited. (laughs) Uh, That's going to have the Vision as well as Scarlet Witch, and I imagine their romantic uh, chemistry. Uh, Loki. Yep. Getting his own show. Was his live action or animated? It's live action. Okay, I can't remember. It's Tom Hiddleston. Yeah, Yeah. somebody was... uh, The next one is animated. Uh, what if? Okay, that was what the if. one that was animated. Yeah, and it's going to have the Watcher in it, which is awesome. I've always, you know, wanted the Watcher in these Marvel movies. I thought for a minute Stan Lee was going to be the Watcher, but um, you know, the Watcher, if you're not aware of, is basically a giant baby man who lives on the moon that uh, is neither good nor evil, but instead is passive and just watches important events uh, unfold on Earth. 
and he's aware of like all the different universes and timelines and multiverses and he's like a a, a mental repository of everything that has happened is happening and will happen uh, so really interesting there and uh hawkeye yes getting his own show with uh kate bishop you liked that comic right i did i really enjoyed that one yeah kate bishop's in it and it has the same logo as the comics mm -hmm. and the comics if you haven't read them are hilarious yeah they're so good yeah they're so good um it's one of i i'm not a big hawkeye person but those comics uh top-notch stuff uh, so the, that's all the announcements that Marvel made, which is a ton. A ton. Uh, but there's noteworthy exceptions. Like, they didn't mention certain properties that we would expect uh, them to talk about, such as Black Panther 2, uh, such as Captain Marvel 2, such as Guardian, Guardians of the Galaxy 3, um, such as Spider-Man, the next Spider-Man movie, um, which you haven't even seen the new one. No, right. I'm behind. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was great. It was great. No spoilers. It was awesome. If, if you haven't seen it, go see it. Um, but they didn't make any announcements about another one. And they didn't talk about any of the Fox properties that they bought, such as X-Men, such as Fantastic Four, um, and Deadpool. And uh, most importantly, what we're talking about here, they did not mention Avengers 5. Uh, which is the glue that ties all the different franchises together. And so why wouldn't they talk about these Fox properties? Why wouldn't they talk about Deadpool? Why wouldn't they talk about the new Avengers movie? I think there's a lot that can be read into that. And I think they're going to be keeping these as surprises in the upcoming movies that are coming out, which is why I think they're keeping the Fox announcement for the Multiverse of Madness as like a, a, a plot element in that movie. I think that's when they're going to introduce these things. I don't think they're going to be talking about Avengers 5 right now because it's going to spoil the plots in these new movies. So I think there's going to be a lot of surprising stuff taking place in these movies that if we already knew the plot of Avengers, it would be spoiled for us. So let's talk about the new Avengers movie and what we expect is going to happen, uh, what we think might happen, and general theories on that. So coming out of Endgame, no spoilers here. You've seen it. Mm -hmm. I've seen it. Um, I think at this point, it's going to be time for them to rebuild the Avengers. The Avengers um, roster in the comics shifts all the time. Um, it is never the same. No. They're constantly adding members, taking away members. Uh, there was a period of time... Well, when the Avengers first started, there's only like four or five of them. But a couple years ago, there was a period of time where it's just like every superhero was an Avenger. Yeah. And it was just dozens and dozens and dozens. And there's a different, there's a bunch of different factions. East Coast, West Coast. That's uh, true, too. European. Like young Avengers. Young Avengers. Uh, the Mighty Avengers during Civil War. Like, there's a bunch of different versions Secret of... Secret Avengers. Yeah. yeah. There's a ton. And there's a bunch of different ways they can go with it, um, which I think is a really interesting idea. And just hearing about the, the types of movies coming out, it's a bunch of newcomers. And so I think the new Avengers movie is going to star mostly these new superheroes and uh, not so much the legacy Avengers uh, that we've been grown, uh, grown up with and familiar with in these movies. So who are some of these new characters? Um, Blade. <laughs> <laughs> But also, I think with the addition of some of these Fox properties coming over to Disney, that there's some um, X-Men that we might see join the Avengers roster. So I'm looking at some of the more popular X-Men. Wolverine. Cyclops, maybe. Uh, Jean Grey. I wouldn't... I was like, Jean Grey, maybe. But yeah. if they're doing a lot of Scarlet Witch stuff, they probably wouldn't do too much Jean Grey. Yeah, I wouldn't expect them to bring so many X-Men into the Avengers movie. Just yeah. like one or two representatives at the most. Um, same goes with Fantastic Four. Uh, Reed Richards. Mr. Fantastic himself. Yeah, who maybe. knows more, more about the multiverse than freaking Reed Richards. That's what I'm... Yeah, exactly. 
uh, Ben Grimm, the thing, mm -hmm. I think could be a funny addition. Uh, he's kind of like a Hulk type uh, character. And of course, Deadpool. Can you imagine Deadpool coming into an Avengers movie? <laughs> I mean, he's he is he he would be aware of the multiverse. Yeah, right? he should be. Because he is aware of like the audience. Yeah, yeah. He breaks the fourth wall, um, and so if they deal a lot with the multiverse, uh, I think he would be someone that would be important to that kind mm -hmm. of. Uh, he teams up with a lot of Avengers. I know he teams up with Hawkeye a lot. Um, he's one of the few. Who knows that Hawkeye is deaf uh, in one ear, so he lifts up his mask halfway so Hawkeye can read lips while they're on the battlefield, which I thought was cool. Yeah, he just, like, knows things. He just does stuff. And Somehow. He <laughs> yeah, just knows he just everything. knows everything. But he also appears in a lot of the What If comics. Yeah. You know, like, if there's any big uh, Marvel event, usually within a year or two, Deadpool will have his own version of that event <laughs> where he inserts himself in just, like, this whole What If Deadpool was here kind of a thing. Uh, which is funny. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see him show up. Um, also, new characters in this uh, in the next Avengers movie. I'm expecting new torchbearers. I think there's going to be a lot of mantle passing um, from the superheroes. So Thor, I think Natalie Portman's character, Jane Foster, is uh, probably, most likely, have they announced it? I, I don't know. They but said that she's going to wield uh, Mjolnir. They did? Mm -hmm. They did say that officially? Yeah, because there was a picture of her like holding it. And I was just like, ah! Oh, I didn't even see that. <laughs> it was I didn't so see that. good. I was like, yeah! But for years now in the comic, the character Jane Foster has been Thor. Mm -hmm. And it's been really interesting. I've loved those issues. And um, I was wondering if they were going to follow suit in the movies. Natalie Portman hasn't appeared in the last few Thor entries. No, she the last one she was in was the the second one. Yeah. The yeah. one that no one remembers because it was Yeah, it wasn't that good. But she wasn't in Thor 3. She wasn't in the new Avengers movies. Mm -hmm. She had like a brief little cameo. Um, so it's great that she's coming back officially. And um, I wouldn't be surprised to see if this is just a mantle passing uh, to her. Hawkeye, Kate Bishop, She's in a TV show. I wouldn't be surprised to see her elevated to the next Avengers movie. Uh, Captain America, of course. Falcon mm -hmm. is the new Captain America. They showed uh, Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Stan on stage together at Comic-Con. Anthony Mackie came out with the shield first, and then he handed it over to uh, Sebastian Aww. Stan, who held it up, and then he pretended to give it back and then tried to keep it. <laughs> How cute. So you know all this stuff. You I'm telling you, I, I just, didn't even I just, see any. You watched the panels. <laughs> I didn't watch the. I watched the highlights. Oh, you on watched Instagram. like moments and stuff. Yeah. Um, and then rounding it out, Black Widow. So uh, I don't know much about this new Black Widow movie, but I do know that there are multiple Black Widows. Mm -hmm. Like Scarlett Johansson isn't the only Black Widow. A Black Widow is anyone that went through the the Russian spy training um, in whatever school that is to become a Black Widow. So I wouldn't be surprised to see new and different Black Widows uh, join the mix here. Also, I think we're going to be getting a bunch of new villains, or at least a handful of new villains. So as I mentioned earlier, we got the X-Men to play with now. We have the Fantastic Four to play with now. And some of my favorite villains come from those uh, places. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about Doctor Doom. Yes. The, the classic Fantastic Four villain. Uh, I would love to see Doctor Doom mm -hmm. in the new Avengers movie. Um, and even recently, Doctor Doom has been seen as Iron Man. He's taken on the Iron Man mantle. Uh, did you read any of these? Mm -mm, I did. It, it was really interesting stuff. Um, and everyone's kind of questioning, is he good? Is he evil? Uh, what are his motivations in becoming Iron Man? Uh, I, th I believe it's called the infamous Iron Man. Hmm. I feel like if they went the route of Doctor Doom, that he would be like Loki was in the first movie, where he hmm. was considered to be a big bad, but really there was a bigger overarching thing. Yeah. Where like if Doctor Doom was what Loki was, like a catalyst to start this new like huge villain project, then what would be the big overarching yeah. arc He's that they would do? He's also a super genius. Yeah. And would be aware of the multiverse and how to possibly uh, harness that power for his own gain. 
Um, and since we're talking about cosmic universe in these new movies with uh, the with the what are they the Eternals? Mm -hmm. uh, Galactus. Let's look at some of the cosmic entities, cosmic villains. Galactus is the first one that comes to mind. Yeah, for sure. Um, who else? Coming from the multiverse on the Fantastic Four side of things, we could see the Maker, who is the evil version of Reed Richards. And much like Doctor Doom, he is in it for his own glory. And he is one of the most, I think, formidable and intimidating villains in Marvel's lineup just because of how super smart this guy is. Um, you've read his, his comics, right? Mm -hmm. I love that guy. Um, I love him. Evil Reed Richards is possibly like the most perfect villain you can come up with for me. <laughs> uh, I just like eat any story uh, up that he's in. Uh, someone else coming from like the cosmic side of things is the Beyonder. And the Beyonder, if you're not familiar, is this mysterious being that comes from beyond everything that we know in space. The, beyond the furthest reaches of the imagination, uh, this guy exists, and he has unbelievable power. Um, again, he's not good, he's not evil, um, he is more of a pacifist, trying to understand heroes and humanity and what it is uh, to be alive in this universe. So, we talked a little bit about the characters, but now I want to start theorizing about the plot. What's going to be the plot of this new movie? And honestly, I think the story can go anywhere at this point. It's so open right now. There's so many directions they can go in. They, uh, the multiverse just yeah. opens up so many doors. I mean, as the name implies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But like, Endgame was exactly that. It was an ending, right? And so this new Phase 4 of Marvel movies is going to be setting the foundation for something new. And um, they've introduced... The, the Infinity Gauntlet. And the Infinity Gauntlet has the ability uh, to allow for time travel and to allow for reality bending. But it seems like with these new movies that they're introducing uh, Cosmic Marvel. So now Cosmic Marvel's on the table. Uh, with the Ant-Man movies, they introduce the Quantum Realm and all the mysteries that are involved there. Doctor Strange's movie is literally called The Multiverse. And so now they have all of that to play with. They have the new Fox properties. So which direction are they going to take? I have no idea. Is anybody's guess at this point? Um, so I think really the strongest foundation that we have to build off of, of what this new movie is going to be, is start looking at some of the established comic book Avenger stories. I say that because the Avengers movies, as well as like Captain America movies, pull their inspiration heavily from the comics. I'm talking about Civil War, mm -hmm. right? I'm talking about Age of Ultron. Um, and so what are some of these comics out there with the Avengers that might uh, shed light as to the direction that we're moving here? So some of the ones that came to mind for me, uh, one that you're familiar with, Secret Invasion. Yeah. Right? That, that story was so good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this one, I, I, I could see them going this route, for sure. It has to do with the scrolls, and what Secret Invasion is, is it um, it reveals the subversive long-term invasion of Earth by the scrolls. Um, so the storyline is that scrolls for years uh, have taken on the roles of superheroes. And um, I won't reveal all the ones, but just for example, say Iron Man for the last few years has actually been a scroll and nobody knows it. And so the question is, who do you trust? Who is human? Who is actually a scroll in disguise? They've introduced the scrolls in the movies. Mm -hmm. uh, they've shown their shape-shifting abilities. And so maybe the new um, Avengers movie would uh, take on the role of secret invasion. Can you see that happening? Yeah. I mean, uh, for those who haven't seen Captain Marvel, the scrolls played a heavy part in her plot. That's right. Um, but, you know, having that being said in the 90s, it only really focused on a portion of the scrolls that may have invaded Earth uh, or even come into our uh, galaxy altogether. 
That's right. Um, so it didn't really show, uh, you know, all of what they could have been doing mm -hmm. um, because they were already in S.H.I.E.L.D. They, uh, you know, whenever they got there, the, um, who knows? I mean, uh, they've already talked about life model decoys in, uh, the first, um, That's right. Avengers movie. Like, they've brought up a lot of stuff that they haven't really explored. Even in, um, uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., they've talked they about had life, some of those. Uh, life model decoys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, wherever, um, uh, Agent Coulson went to, to Fiji. Uh, That's right. <laughs> it's a magical place. I uh, forgot about all that. Yeah, You're like right. they, they've already introduced a lot of this stuff, so I wouldn't be surprised if they kind of keep unraveling some of that uh, that yeah. story. I just loved that comic because it was just like, holy crap, for the last few years, some of these heroes haven't actually been heroes. Yeah, been it aliens. was crazy. I remember reading, um, you know, Spider-Woman, uh, Jessica Drew. Uh, mm -hmm. She w ended up being a scroll, and they didn't even find out until Hydra cut her open. And I was yeah. just like, what the hell yeah, is exactly. happening? Like, it was nuts. Yeah, it was just like everything you thought you know is suddenly like on the table. Um, and just like, it, it just was like the rug was being pulled out from under you, and I loved it. Yeah, it was great. Um, another comic that they cult that they could pull inspiration from, uh, Secret Wars. So this is probably the penultimate classic Marvel story. Um, it was back in the 80s. They did a, another version of it just a couple years ago. Uh, Secret Wars stars the Beyonder, who I mentioned earlier. And um, the Beyonder basically takes a group of superheroes and a, and a group of supervillains and brings them to a new planet called Battle World. And basically it's up for these heroes and villains to duke it out. And it's kind of like the last man standing, the Beyonder grants uh, them like one wish. It could be like their, any any dream that they have, um, any desire he can manifest into reality. Uh, so I could see that happening. I mean, I know at some point Marvel has to look at secret wars uh, for a movie story. It's like the 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 main classic uh, comic story coming from Marvel. Uh, so since we're talking about multiverse a lot, I was looking at some comics that have to do with the multiverse. And in the 2000s, Marvel introduced this whole other universe uh, called the Ultimate Universe. And that's where the maker comes from, the evil Reed Richards. And uh, that's also where Miles Morales comes from, mm -hmm. uh, the other Spider-Man. And um, so what are some of the main storylines that involve this Ultimate Universe? And so I was looking at like Ultimate End or like Ultimatum. And basically what this is, is uh, the multiverse converges into one physical space. So all the heroes, all the villains from the different multiverses uh, come together into the same location and it basically uh, becomes the end of the multiverse and uh, everybody now exists in the same reality. Uh, so they could do something like that in, in the new Avengers movie. Uh, so I was looking at just some of the other stories that I'm familiar with and nothing's really leading me to these next ideas, but I think it would, would be interesting. Uh, one of them would be Ultron's Return, or Rage of Ultron. And uh, I don't feel like in the movie Age of Ultron, tell me if you felt differently, that they really fully realized Ultron's potential, right? Not really. I think it was really downplayed. Um, yeah. Because in the books, like, that dude does some damage. So in the books... It, like like in the movies, Ultron is uh, a sentient robot artificial intelligence uh, that was created by one of the Avengers. In the movie, it was Tony Stark. In the comics, it was Hank Pym. And uh, it, he wasn't intended to be evil, but he ended up going that way. But the thing with Ultron is, uh, every time he is defeated, he returns. Like, you cannot completely eradicate his existence. There's always a piece of his intelligence uh, that regroups, becomes stronger, and comes back. And every time he comes back, he is more powerful than he was the previous time. Technically, right now, it would be Vision is part of Ultron. Interesting. Right? I believe that is correct. Yeah. Because Vision was made by like infusing the yeah, Infinity yeah. Stone with Jarvis, and Jarvis was already part of uh, 
of Ultron. You're getting me more excited about this idea because <laughs> I love Ultron. I love Ultron. I did not really enjoy Age of Ultron I didn't as a movie. Either. But if they brought him back and he was more powerful than before and more formidable a foe, if he somehow took over Vision and Vision became Ultron, then that I think would be really interesting. Um, and then just like a complete what if story, Chaos War. Uh, what is Chaos War? Chaos War is an event where a bunch of the dead uh, Avengers got brought back to life, rose from their graves uh, to fight the Chaos King. And um, I think this might be a way to reintroduce some of our fallen heroes. Um, I don't think that in actuality they're going to go this route so soon. I think if they wanted to resurrect any fallen um, heroes, that it might be done 10 years from now, 15 years from now, but not like the next Avengers Yeah, movie. I don't think so either. Um, so those are all the thoughts that I have regarding Avengers 5. Do you have anything that uh, you want to throw out? For Avengers 5, I do think it's going to be magic multiverse, because that's what mm -hmm. each theme of each new movie is uh, sounding like, right? Which is really cool. With this new Disney Plus aspect of it, it could make a lot of things go in a different direction. Like for me, I'm really hoping to see a Young Avengers spinoff. Uh, each Young Avenger has already int been introduced in most of the MCU movies. Um, you know, Kate Bishop is going to be on Disney Plus with Hawkeye. Oh, yeah, uh, Young Avengers. Uh, Monica Rambeau has already been introduced in Captain Marvel. Uh, Scott Lang's daughter is Stature later on. Oh, yeah. Um, and even though they didn't go the way in the comic book uh, Iron Heart for Iron Man, he yep. did say that his daughter's middle name is Heart. He did? Yeah. He said whatever her first name is, blah, blah, Heart. And then, oh. uh, and then I'm thinking like, oh, okay, well, she could be the next... Iron Heart. I don't right. even think about that. Right? Like they're all they're all there. They're but in the comics it's Riri Will Williams. Mm -hmm. But she goes by Iron Heart. Yeah, yeah. But they're not related. They're the yeah, they're not related yeah. at all. She's just a super like smart girl. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, who like high school idolizes. Or something. Uh, yeah. you know, and there, there's a bunch of different ways they could go with that, but I really think because they're already they're already there. Like You know what? You're you're getting me uh thinking about like this young Avengers thing. And if in the vision, if if in WandaVision, uh, the Vision starts a family, uh, then he could have his son and daughter, which he has in the comics, and then they become part of like the Young Avengers. So that could be like the the Vision equivalent. So would the Young Avengers be like a separate franchise? They would have their own movies, or that, or would they be could like even have their own show. Like it could be uh... a nice like little spinoff show. Um, I think it would be neat. Especially because we've already seen them jump five years in the future. Yeah. Um, and Scott Lang's daughter went from like six to 13 in like two seconds. It was nuts. Uh, but mm -hmm. I was just like, okay. Um, and, you know, with the Infinity Gauntlet being in play, who's to say that we can't see them in the future? Um, yeah. Or whatever. So, I don't know. I thought that was a, a neat idea. Because they're all, they're all there. They're already in, in, the, in the movies. They're already there. Yeah, so what do you guys think? Is there any, any storyline, any comic storyline that you think that they would pursue in Avengers 5? Uh, let us know in the comments below.